most of us are familiar with Jensen Wong from his keynote presentations that he does at least biannually whenever a new family of GPUs is getting ready to roll out from NVIDIA. Of course, Jensen always has his cool guy at leather jacket on that probably, quite frankly, costs more than my car. Speaking of cars, Jensen's also known as a little bit of a speed freak with a nice collection of cars himself. But before any of that was possible, Jensen Wong was born in Tainan City on the island of Taiwan, February 17th of 1963. Although they were still living abroad at the time, Jensen's parents realized there may be more opportunities for both Jensen and his brother here in the U.S. In fact, Jensen's mother started teaching them 10 random words of English every day, even though at that point in time, she didn't understand or speak the language. During the 1970s, Jensen's family was living in Thailand. However, during the 1970s, you had a lot of uprisings in Thailand and massacres that were taking place at the same time. Jensen's parents decided that was not the place for the boys to live. In 1973, Jensen's parents sent him and his brother to live with family in Beaverton, Oregon, just outside of Portland. The family had thought they'd found a great school to send the brothers to called Oneida Baptist Institute. This school is in the rolling hills of eastern Kentucky. Unfortunately, what no one would realize until sometime later was that the school in Oneida was really a school of last resorts for kids that have already been kicked out of more traditional schools there in the area. Even at a young age of nine, Jensen's main duty was to go ahead and clean the bathrooms there. However, he does look back apparently at that time with some fondness and appreciates the toughness that it bestowed in him. Many years later, you can see here in 2019 that Jensen and his wife, Lori, had in fact given a matching donation back to Oneida Baptist of $2 million so that they could go ahead and open up a girls' dormitory and classroom building. Eventually, Jensen and his entire family were resettled in Beaverton, Oregon, just outside of Portland once again. Once back in Beaverton, Jensen was able to enjoy a more traditional high school setting and attended the Aloha High School. Although very serious about his grades, Jensen was also a nationally ranked junior table tennis player. After high school, Jensen went on to attend the Oregon State University. Now, I feel like this is very important because Jensen got a degree in electrical engineering. Could you imagine trying to run a company like NVIDIA with what it produces if you didn't have the technical background to back it up? While Jensen was attending Oregon State, he met his lab partner, Lori, who would eventually become his wife five years later. Just to realize how big brain Jensen really is, after attending Oregon State, he went ahead to get his master's in electrical engineering at Stanford. Now, people give Jensen a hard time for all kinds of different business practices that have occurred at NVIDIA over the years, but don't doubt how smart this guy is. He graduated from high school at 16 and was about 21 when he had his master's degree from Stanford. Being a really young man when he graduated from Stanford, Jensen did not start NVIDIA right away. He had a couple of other jobs on his pathway to starting NVIDIA. One of them, interestingly enough, was working for AMD. I'm a little foggy on the actual relationship. Maybe there's a term in Taiwanese. It doesn't quite translate over to English. However, one of the interesting things about Jensen working for AMD was the company that later Lisa Su would, of course, be the CEO of. And some people say it's an uncle-niece relationship. Some people say it's more like a distant cousin relationship. However the relationship goes, it was really interesting that two people from one family are both so high powered in the silicon industry. As we all know, eventually though, Jensen Wong would start NVIDIA in 1993. And to this day, he's still the founder, president, CEO, and I believe chairman of the board to boot. There's certainly been some ups and downs for NVIDIA over the years, especially when it comes to consumer business practices. However, in a real landmark occasion in 1993, they did produce their first GPU, the NV1. Being old enough to have had an NV1 in 1995, or maybe it was 1996 when I actually got mine, well, the interesting thing was is GPUs then didn't run every game. You'd actually have to buy specific games to run the GPU that you had in your system. Over the last 30 years, NVIDIA has produced all kinds of different GPUs, both for gamers and for data centers, and had some practices that were, well, you know, not great for consumers. Guys, if you want a video that dials more deeply into the actual company NVIDIA itself, let me know down in the comments below. But I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there for today. Guys, a massive thanks for watching the video. And until next time, GIF out.